everybody, welcome back to Ready to Die Fight. I'm Chris, and yesterday I took the boy to see a Holocaust survivor speak. And it was a very, uh, I don't like to use the word interesting or fascinating because I, I don't feel like that word does justice for the horrors that happened. Um, but that's the best word that I can think of. Um, it was very educational, for sure. And I think there were a lot of really good lessons that I learned from this, and hopefully the boy learned something as well. It was over his head. He didn't really understand a lot of things that she was talking about, but hopefully he got something from it. I definitely got something from it, and I wanted to share some of the things that I learned that I think is relevant to prepping and survival and kind of what this channel is about. Now, this woman, I don't want to tell her whole story because it's her story and you know uh, but she was she was I believe born in Amsterdam um, and she was about I think she said she's about eight or nine when the war ended and she survived her parents survived the majority of her family survived um, because they went into hiding and the people in her family who didn't survive were the ones who did, who either couldn't or wouldn't or for whatever reason didn't go into hiding. Um, and her story was very different from other stories that I heard from other survivors. Uh, there's a very nice Holocaust museum in Metro Detroit that I've been to a number of times and they usually have a survivor there speaking and telling their stories and I think all of them were either escaped to America or a different country. Um, some of them did survive the concentration camps. This is the, I think, the first person I've heard talk who was in hiding for five years. Um, and she was part of this uh, underground movement or resistance where they were hiding Jewish families to keep them safe. And the conditions and the circumstances were probably worse than what we can imagine. But she had a, really, a lot of really good insights and, and, and things that really stuck with me. Um, the first is that I really think it's important to um, have these conversations and see these people talk when you have the opportunity. At least for me, history is always kind of like, a, it, feel, it always feels like such a distant thing. You know, it always feels very far removed. And it's like, oh, this story of this thing that happened almost 100 years ago at this point. And it, it, it just feels like a story, almost like a fairy tale to me. But seeing someone who was alive and actually saw it happen, um, who, whose family members or friends maybe have perished by this event, uh, who, you know, actually lived that life and she's alive telling that story, that makes it all so much more real. And... It's a kind of a frightening reminder that these things really did happen, and it wasn't that long ago, um, and they could happen again. And that's, um, you know, it's kind of, it's pretty heavy. It's kind of scary. It's kind of, I don't want to say eye-opening because it's something that I think that I was aware of, but it's, it's, it's a good refresher and kind of a reminder to be grateful for what we do have, the freedoms that we do have, and to not take them for granted because they, they can go away. They've gone away in the past for various groups of people. Um, there's no reason to believe that it can't happen again. And in some places in the world, it is still happening. So as far as like the big takeaways, there were three big takeaways for me as far as prepping is concerned, uh, without necessarily specifically being about the Holocaust. Um, and the, one of the big ones was that she was able to survive, her family was able to survive, only with the help of other people. Um, the kindness and bravery and hospitality of other people is what kept her alive. Uh, these people really put their lives on the line, their own families at risk, to help these Jewish families to get to safety, to fight against the Nazis, to um, hide them in their homes and provide them with food and clothing and whatever they needed because they couldn't work. They couldn't go out. They literally had to hide for five years. Um, her family owned businesses. They owned homes. They sounded like before the war, they were doing fine and it was all taken away from them. 
and and so they they lost everything. They lost everything almost overnight and had to leave their country, leave their home, um, and go someplace else. And thankfully, there were people to help them. And that was one of the big takeaways that I got is is that. There's so many people who think they can do it on their own, and you know I'm I'm kind of one of those people. I I I don't have like a big network of preppers or anything who are going to help me out. You know I tell a little boy all the time. You know it's just us. It's like we have to help each other. We got to take care of each other. It's just the two of us. Um, and I don't know how realistic that is. She she and her family. I mean she was just a kid, so she would have been really screwed on her own. But even her her parents, her dad and mom. They, they couldn't have done that on their own. There, there's no way. Um, they really depended on their neighbors, their friends, good people who saw the evil that was happening and standing up and fighting against it. And, and that's, that's huge. That's huge. It, those communities really came together to support and help each other. And, and that's how they were able to survive. And unfortunately, a lot of people weren't able to survive, but, but that's how she was. That she gave complete credit to, you know, it wasn't her cleverness or her ingenuity. It wasn't her being strong through all this. It was her community. It was people looking out for her and taking care of her and her family. That's why she survived. And that's, 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 a, that's huge. That's huge. That's something to really think about. You know, our role... Not even just when crisis happens, but now, leading up to it, before it happens. And, you know, they, they weren't completely blindsided. You know, there were signs that things were getting bad before things got really bad. It wasn't a complete switch overnight. Um, and so they did start preparing for it. You know, they kind of, the writing was on the wall, so to speak. And people were getting ready uh, as best they could for what was happening, although they didn't know it was going to last as long as it did or get as bad as it did. But... Um, they started doing what they could as soon as they could. Uh, the second thing that um, I really took away from this, and it kind of reaffirmed what I already knew and believed, kids are amazingly resistant, <laughs> resilient. <laughs> um, I think, she, yeah, I think she said she was eight or nine when the war ended. She was young enough but old enough. She, she knew what was going on. She knew things were bad. And she survived. She was okay. She said that she doesn't even feel like she has a whole lot of trauma. She said she doesn't feel like she has any trauma. I find that hard to believe. She's like, you must have some. I, I can't believe that someone could go through this type of scenario and not have any. Um, but she said her parents, she could see signs of trauma in them. Her mom in particular, it sounds like, it had a really hard time post-war. Uh, her dad, she said, had a really hard time during, you know, while they were hiding. He said he was really having a hard time with that. But she said she was okay. Part of the reason why she felt like she was so okay with everything that happened, um, and, and, and when I say okay, I don't mean that like this is an okay thing, but like that she really didn't suffer from uh, PTSD was because during this time, her family, her friends, her community, the people who were hiding her, she said she felt surrounded by love and support. These people had her back. They protected her. She said she felt safe. She felt loved. She felt supported. And because of that, she was okay. She's maintained, she's, she's still okay. She said she joined a support group for a little while just because to see, and she said there was a lot of people who are truly suffering and from post-traumatic stress and have a lot of baggage due to what they've been through, but she said she doesn't feel like she's, she, she was very fortunate. She was very fortunate. She, her family survived. She, she had her family with her. Um, and she seemed to really stress the importance of that, and that's something I really took home, is that a lot of people worry, myself included, you know, prepping and getting ready for these disasters, you know, how it's going to affect your kids. Kids are strong. Kids are tough. <laughs> they can get through things as long as they have somebody caring for them. As long as they have at least one person who cares about them, who loves them, who's supporting them, protecting them, the kids will be all right. The kids will be okay. And, and, and that's something I truly believe and talking to her and listening to her tell her story, she, she really reaffirmed that for me. Kids are tougher than we expect. And, and I don't think that children have changed. I think the way that maybe we handle children has changed. I think we're more delicate with children. Whereas back in the day, you know, you always go like, oh, these kids these days are soft. They're not soft. We just treat them like they're soft. They're just as tough as they ever were. And this woman, something else she said that was really interesting to me, she said that... Uh, 
no one ever sat down and talked to her and was like, hey, you know, we have to do this and you got to do this and this is really important and dangerous and all that. She's like, she was just in tune. She knew what was happening. She knew the importance of it. She knew it was scary. And whatever needed to be done, she just did it. Whatever her parents did, she followed. Whatever they said, she just had to be right in step with them. And, and she knew it. And she did it. And that's just all there was to it. And, and I think when under stress, when it matters, I think, I think your kids, especially if you have a good relationship with them and they feel safe and supportive with you, they'll be okay. They'll, they'll fall in line. They'll do what they need to do because kids are survivors. People, we are survivors. We're, we are, whether you believe we're designed or evolved, either way, we would not have made it to 2020 if we weren't survivors. Um, so that was a big takeaway for me. Um, and then the last thing that I think really resonated with me in particular, um, she said, somebody asked her if she was going to be, when the next time she was doing a talk or where's the next place or when she'd be speaking again, they wanted to come and see her talk again. And she said she didn't know. She doesn't like to talk about this stuff. Um, she only talks on rare occasions when she feels like it. She wants her children to know the story. She wants people in general, you know, she it's not a secret, but she she talks about it on her terms and she never wanted to be a regular speaker on on this topic. And her reasoning was that she said this is something that happened, but this isn't my life. This isn't this isn't my life. I won't let this be my life. She said she's not going to let this be the thing that defines her. This isn't the thing that controls her. She's not dwelling on it. The war ended and she wanted to get back to a regular life. She went back to school. The kids, they said they didn't talk about it. A lot of the kids, uh, she went to a Jewish school. A lot of the kids um, didn't have parents. They didn't have family members. Some of them lived in group homes and things like that. They didn't talk about it. They some of them survived concentration camps. They moved on. They, they joined different clubs. They did their schoolwork. They made friends. They dated. They got married. They wanted to live life. And to me, that was huge. To go through something as horrific as the Holocaust, that's probably the, the, one of the worst things that any of us could imagine in, in modern history. And, <clears throat> and to just... It's, she showed so many pictures of her life post-war and pictures, you know, pre-war. And she's happy. She's smiling. She got married. She had kids. Her kids got married. Bar mitzvahs. Her faith is just as strong as it ever was. She's probably stronger than ever. Um, and she wants to enjoy her life. She wants to live a normal life. And she says she, the Holocaust is not, that's not who she is. That's not who, that's not her. That's not her life. That's a thing that happened almost a hundred years ago and I thought that was so good I mean I I've been through some things we've all been through some things nothing like a holocaust I've never feared for my life because of my religion um, I've never feared for my life because of my color of skin really maybe a little bit not on a there's been a couple of dicey situations but nothing where I was like truly legitimate threat like I've got nowhere safe to be you know, I've made, met some shady people here and there, but I mean, nothing in comparison to what she experienced. Certainly not as a child, certainly not five years of it. More, really, because that's the official word. Not like it was just start and stop clean endpoints. There was build up to that where she was experiencing oppression and whatnot. And so, never experienced anything like that. But I find that I still let those the bad things that have happened almost defined, it's almost becomes part of my identity. And that doesn't make sense. That's not who I am. That's the thing that happened. I have my whole life <laughs> after that, right? And so I think that's something to really consider as we're thinking about these disaster scenarios and, you know, I, I try to keep it fun and goofy, making it about zombies and whatnot, but there are real bad things that can happen and there will be life after that and I think we need to prepare for that life after the event and prepare ourselves mentally and emotionally 
to process what's going on, make sure we have the tools and the mindset that we can be okay and that we can live our lives and not just survive, but really live, really live past the event, whatever it is. Um, it was very insightful um, and uh, thought-provoking and, um, I don't know, inspirational, listening to her talk. Um, I hope that I was able to kind of give justice to her message. Um, and if you ever get a chance to speak to a Holocaust survivor or, or really anyone who's lived through, you know, some of these historical events, um, it's an, it is an amazing opportunity. Take it while you can. Um, if you enjoy this type of video, if this helps you in any kind of way, if you just like looking at my pretty face, um, hit that like button, subscribe for more content like this. It really helps the channel out, helps me out personally. Um, and I'm looking forward to the next video. Maybe it'll be more fun. <laughs> this, one's, this one's a little bit of a downer, right? I usually try to do something a bit more fun than this. But sometimes you gotta be serious. Uh, sometimes, sometimes that's how it goes. <laughs> All right, catch you guys in the next video.